Greetings and salutations. Welcome to this Prophetic Insights where we analyze current events as they are fulfilling Bible prophecies. Safe to Serve International, first time viewers, welcome one, welcome all to this Prophetic Insights. Brothers and sisters, we have some breaking news to cover throughout this presentation. I'm actually going to divide this into two segments. The first is going to address a startling current event happening presently in Italy, which is in regards to the leaders of the Seventh-day Adventist denomination, as well as the laity. In the second segment, I'm going to address a very pointed current event transpiring in Babylon. But before we launch into the second segment, let's address the first matter at hand. Brothers and sisters, we have seen recently that it has gone viral, a particular statement that was made by President Ted Wilson of the SDA denomination. And many media outlets within this movement carried the account. And one, Present Truth Platform, Advent Messenger, Evangelist Andy Roman had this headline. Ted Wilson calls the papacy, the beast of revelation, and that Sunday, the mark of the beast. And brothers and sisters, that is correct. That is correct, the headline. That is correct. However, is it just enough to identify who the beast of Revelation is, and there are many beasts, but the beasts, the beast of Revelation 13 and chapter 14, is it just enough to identify who the image of the beast is? Is it, is it enough to just identify what the mark of the beast is? Or are we also to flee from that beast? Not to unite with that beast. Not to receive ecumenical alliance with that beast. That's what Revelation chapter 18 and verse 4 clearly states. And verse 2 mentions the fall of Babylon. And who are connected with Babylon. And verse 4 says, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. And we know Babylon in the primary sense is the papacy. Revelation 17 verse 1 through verse 6 confirms. And friends, a great question is, what alliance are professed SDA leaders forming with the papacy, an ecumenical alliance, brothers and sisters? There it is on the screen. Ganun Diop, director of public P-A-R-L there he is my friends joining with the papacy and this is happening still after President Wilson after flip-flopping hmm, being disingenuous stated that the beast is the papacy and the mark is a Sunday worship by law and friends I've covered that in the past Look at what this says. It's a backsliding church that lessens the distance between itself and the papacy. We were taught to abhor papacy, not to join an ecumenical alliance. If God were here today, would God approve of such movements, of such acts? If the pioneers of the SDA movement, Ellen White, were alive, James White, would they approve of such apostasy and abomination? No, they would not, brothers and sisters. There it is. Here is God's professed leader joining with Popery, forming that ecumenical alliance. Satan's right-hand man. That's it, brothers and sisters. This is apostasy. And yet many have been applauding. I want to say this. Many have been applauding President Wilson that he has come 180 or full circle to identify 
and publicly state the beast is of revelation and what the mark of the beast is. They are giving him a round of applause. Yet he still has this individual, Ganundia, forming an ecumenical alliance with Popri and other world apostate religions. And Ganundia represents the Seventh-day Adventist denomination. Yet we have failed to put in place the statement of volume 5 and page 14 that such men should be terminated. Apostasy at its highest level. Many more could be said right here. Many things I have said in the past, but I want to share with you something here. Because this is hypocrisy. Look at the beast. Identify him. This is the mark of the beast, and yet you are still in ecumenical alliance with that same power. That is uh, an abomination in the sight of Jesus Christ. Get that straight, my friends, and I make no apologies for that. All right? Breaking news. My friends, right now, there is a movement going on in Italy. I'll put it on the screen. There it is. Time to heal. G20 Italy 2021. What a connection with Popery and Italy, Vatican and Italy. What a connection. The G20. Look at the left of your screen. It is entitled Time to Heal. Peace among cultures, understanding between religions. Time to heal, brothers and sisters. How could a professed SDA leader who professes to understand Revelation 13, verse 3, verse 4, verse 10, verse 12, 15 through 17, that all mentions the healing of Popery beginning in the United States of America, Protestant America, healing that wound of Popery. How could you be a part of such alliance? Have been a part of such alliances. Ecumenism of blood. Ecumenism of prayer. Ecumenism of worship. I've showed you those slides and reports with Ganun Diop and the Pope. Ecumenism of blood. That's appalling. It's apostasy. And we know the, po the papacy, Popery, suffered two wounds one from the church protestantism the reformation and the other from civil power again look at this brothers and sisters time to heal now i'm going to make you understand what these uh, this summit discussed and again i want everyone to take a look at the screen there it is my friends some of the topics discussed at the summit. Number one, religious affairs and peaceful coexistence. Is Christian ecumenism a model? You think about that. Can there be any peace, brothers and sisters, with Popery? No, no. All right, next. The role of religious leaders in responding to crises in the Arab region. That's simply a veneer to hide under and to continue ecumenism, ecumenical alliance. Then it says, post-pestilence 19, ethical and practical challenges of the here and now reconstruction. I wonder what, they, what, what has been broken that you need to reconstruct. Next, protecting the planet, sharing a green theology. Is this what the SDAs have sent their representative, their envoy, their ambassador to promote with Roman Catholics and other religions? Huh. And what does the Pope say must be enacted to combat climate change, to care for the planet? Is it not Sunday worship by law? So what atrocity, what a travesty to be stating the mark of the beast is Sunday worship by law. Yet you still allow your envoy, 
your ambassador of the SDA denomination to form an alliance with Popery and other religions promoting caring for the planet? Next, religious leadership towards reconciliation and Ganun Diop spoke on this theme. Religious leadership towards reconciliation. Then it says, are the side events at the bottom? Confessional. Next, Mass for Pentecost Sunday. That's it, brothers and sisters. Pentecost Sunday. Now, I want to share with you the actual PDF. And by God's grace, I'm going to invite the person who sent this to me this morning. And for that reason, I was a few minutes late to start uh, this Midday Power Surge special edition of Prophetic Insights. Take a look at this, brothers and sisters. Now, here is the actual PDF. Time to heal. Peace and understanding between religions. Look at the date. G20 Interfaith Forum 2021. It's happening right now, September 11th. What a date. Through September 14th in Italy. That's it, brothers and sisters. I'm just going to scroll down on this. There it is. G20 Interfaith Forum. So are you telling me, are you aware that there is a G20 with a civil power, the states, the nations, G20 of nations? So here you have a G20 on the religious side. And by the way, Popery, the papacy, has her eyes and ears on the ground in those uh, summits, in those meetings of G20 of nations. And here we have Popery on the other side, uniting church and state, brothers and sisters. All right, notice. I won't be able, now this PDF has a lot of blank spaces. Now, of course, I won't cover all of this. I'm simply going to just scroll down. And by the way, I want to say this. I'm going to actually go to the search engine, all right? And I'm going to type in D up in the search bar, okay? Watch carefully. I'm going to type in the word D up, the name D up. Is he here? Yes. There it is, brothers and sisters. There it is. Notice, speakers, Ganundia. All right. There it is. Let me zoom in a little bit. On September 13th, when is September 13th? That's today, brothers and sisters. There it is. What is the title? Religious Leadership Towards Reconciliation. And of course, he's going to hide under the, the head title, Racism. Not everything that's good is profitable. And there it is, brothers, and I hope you comprehended that. Speakers on top, Ganundi up. Now notice his connection. Secretary General of the International Religious Liberty Association. Do you see the name SDA there? It's not there, brothers and sisters. Yet, look at the other speakers. Notice how their religious affiliation is in their title. President of the Union of the Italian Islamic Communities. That's Yassin uh, Lafram. Next, Mohammed. You see the religion? Muslim Council of Britain. Next, Michael. EU Agency for Fundamental Rights are making a point. Jim Winkler of the National Council of Churches. Where is Ganun Diop's full title? Just Secretary General of the International Religious Liberty Association? Of what nation, I'm going to ask, if I were from the world? Of what religion, I would ask, if I were not a SDA. Does it make sense, friends? What is he hiding? Or has he been terminated? And we don't know as yet. Or is he really Secretary General of the International Religious Liberty Association, not only of the SDA denomination, but other denominations? 
Is he the head of an umbrella organization? These are questions that we need to ask. Now, that was page 46. Let's go to page 66. All right, there you have it, my friends. There he is again. Right here, right column, one, two, three, four, fourth name down. Right here, Ganundia. There it is, my friends. International, there he is. And notice below him, you see actually the connection of Naomi. Italian Jewish communities. The point is still made. Why is it his is so ambiguous? Why is the question? Is he so ambiguous? Brothers, my, this is apostasy. I wonder what is going to be the response. By the way, let me see if I can find. Let me scroll down and you take a look at this, brothers and sisters. Even, even Mormons are part of this. All right, friends. And of course, now this is in the sea. All right, notice. Look at the Catholics who are also a part of this. Let's, let's go here. Let's type in Catholic. All right. Let's come down to where the names of speakers are. Well, brothers, there it is right there. Georgetown, top right column, Georgetown University. Is that not a Jesuit organization? And friends, I could go on and on through this. Page 69. Uh, look at that, brothers. Holy See. That's what we're talking about. Uniting with Popery. Page 70. It's all over. Council of Churches. All right, friends. This is gross apostasy. This is treason in high places. Sell out. Betrayal. Because God would not approve of such things in these last days. Neither in the former days. He would not. He would not approve of such things. Brothers and sisters, there it is, Roman Catholic, Georgetown University. Brothers and sisters, this is a crisis among us. I wonder, where is the outcry of those who claim to be present truth preachers among the SDA movement? Where is the outcry? They are silent. And that's why we are told, brothers and sisters, if there was one sin above another of which God's people were guilty is doing nothing in the case of an emergency. Neutrality, indifference in a religious crisis is regarded by God as a grievous crime and equal to the worst type of hostility against God. That's it, brothers and sisters. Volume 3, page 280, page 281. This is a crisis. And what are we told in GC, GC 45? Let there be difference and even spiritual war. No union with Popery. But remember, these things were prophesied to take place. Just as Judas was a traitor, Judas a betrayer, at the first advent, these men like Ganun Diop, if he does not repent, and others are the modern day betrayers like Judas Iscariot. These things were prophesied. Go back and read Great Controversy, page 608. These men are going to be the most bitterest foes, enemies of God's people in the time of the Sunday Lord time period when we are brought before church and state powers. So don't be surprised. These things were prophesied, brothers and sisters. Now, I'm going to pause this. Remember, I just got this breaking news. I'm going to sit back and watch now. All those who were applauding. President Wilson, I would identify the beast and what the mark of the beast is. What are they going to say publicly now? On Facebook. On YouTube. On social media. What will come from their pen in their articles on these various SDA publishing sites? 
I wonder what they are going to say now. Remember, I said nothing publicly, directly. After that ASI sermon from Elder Wilson, I said nothing. Why? Because I gave him the benefit of the doubt. Why say something prematurely? And then behind the scenes, it was now reported that there was great reformation among the movement. It would have seemed I spoke without knowledge. I spoke prematurely. I held my peace, said nothing. But well, look at this now. I was thinking maybe now we would hear that Ganun Diop and others have been terminated or they made public statements of confession of faults and wrongs and made the necessary changes. Reformation. But look at this. September 13th, 2021. By the way, it began September 11th. And what do people dial in a time of emergency? 911. This is the true 911 among us as Seventh day Adventists. This is the true emergency, brothers and sisters. In a time of emergency, what are God's people to do? We can't die 911 to call Christ and to awaken the people. What does Joel chapter 2 verse 1 say, those of you alive? In a time of war and emergency, what does Joel chapter 2 verse 1 say? What does Numbers chapter 10 verse 7 through verse 9 say, I covered that this past Sabbath. It says, blow the trumpet with an alarm. That's the true 911 among us. That's the true call, trumpet and alarm. That's it, brothers and sisters. I wonder, where is the outcry? Or has Protestantism truly become dead within SDA movement. Where is the protest? We can write articles. We can post statements on Facebook and other websites. We can present our various soliloquies. Look at the Pope. Look at Popery. And we should. Look at Church and State Union. We should. Look at Popery opposing Protestantism. And we should. But that's not all, friends. Why? The enemy. It's not only without the gate. Mm -mm. The enemy is within the gate. As Joe Cruz once said and wrote, enemies at the gate. That was in Joe's, Joe Cruz's time. Now the enemies are within the gate, brothers and sisters. I wonder what is going to come from their pen now. Their fingertips now as they type on their computers. Or their thumb. Now, as they pose from their mobile devices or from their lips and mouth as they used to speak, what would they say now? Or are they also dumb dogs that cannot bark and will not bark? Do you realize now the grave effect of this? What's going to happen when God's faithful Protestants continue the biblical protest? Do you know what they would say? We have run a research and we realize that your denomination believe in ecumenism. They believe in uniting with the Pope's agenda. They believe in peace with Popery and other religions. They would quote the words of Ganundia and President Wilson. They would look and show empirical data, reports, of what Ganun Diop has been doing. And say that means you are the troublemakers. You are the fringe groups of people. You. You are the offshoots. The fanatics. So now we must fight. We must unite to fight against you fundamentalists. Extremists. Offshoots. That's how diabolical this movement, this 911 emergency is among us as a people. Okay, friends, there's so much more I could say. I don't care, and I say that humbly. I don't care what people want to say 
and what they want to label this as some innuendos and diatribe against Mr. Wilson and the... Uh, let me tell you something. The protest continues. And as long as God gives me breath, I will not be silent. Understand that, brothers and sisters. This is a crisis. Cry aloud. Spear not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions and the house of Israel, the house of Seventh-day Adventists, their sins. Isaiah 58 and verse 1. Trumpet and alarm. All right, friends. Let me see my time. That by itself cannot save us. But it will cause us not to follow blind guides to damnation. Let me segue into something else. Look at this, brothers and sisters. All right. Look at this, friends. This is uh, September 10, 2021. The headline says, Members of Congress and their staff are exempt, exempt from President Biden's inoculation mandate. Friends, don't miss this. Here's my point as we close. This is simply a double standard. I want everyone to note that. This is a double standard. Now, if you might miss the connection with the first series of current events and application and the latter series of current events with application, don't miss this. Double standards. So just as the president of the SDA is so quick to identify after flip-flopping and being quiet for so many years what the beast is, who the beast is, what the mark of the beast is, and yet still allowing the ambassador of the church to unite with the beast power. That is what I call, in some respects, a double standard. Now, second, Members of Congress are exempt. Let's read this, my friends. Mr. President of America, new inoculation mandates for federal employees don't apply to the members of Congress or those who work for Congress or the federal court system. Second quote. However, watch, my friends. It doesn't apply to the House of Representatives. The mandate does not apply to the members of the U.S. Senate. Also, it does not apply to the members of SCOTUS, the Supreme Court. Let me shorten it. The judicial branch of the federal government. It does not apply to them. Is that not a double standard? I'm going to show you why this is so important. Stay tuned. Just a quick refresher. It says right there. However, the mandate applies to employees of contractors that do business with whom? The federal government. Next. It even applies to private businesses. The private sector. That's it, my friends. Now watch. It goes on to say that this mandate, it serves, it causes the private sector to become the inoculation police force. Let that sink in. The headline says, average Americans expected to comply, but not the members of Congress. That's a double standard, brothers and sisters. Next. The article says this mandate is being used to bulldoze our constitutional rights. It's leading to a dystopian future in the United States of America. And now it goes on to say this mandate 
has triggered howls of protest, and rightly so, brothers and sisters. And this is Babylon's double standard. Look at this, brothers and sisters. Let's define that double standard. A rule or principle which is unfairly applied in different ways to different people or groups. Double standard, brothers and sisters. Notice, there it is. Now, I am not, I am not, brothers and sisters, a lawyer. And I do not pretend to be a lawyer. But look at what that says. Words underlined in red. It says what, friends? Notice, it says, the governing body, state, the state must treat an individual in the same manner as others in similar conditions and similar circumstances. I want to ask you a question, my friends. Have we come to a time that only individuals who work for the federal government and who are connected to the federal government can become infected? And may infect others, but not the people in, co in Congress, not the people who belong to the judiciary branch of government and their staff. Only one group, right? Double standards from Babylon, brothers and sisters. And notice, it says uh, that this mandate from the president, again, president, of the SDA movement, double standard. President of America, double standard. What a connection. What an implication. Look at this, friends. This mandate is called, from the president, a path out of the pandemic. I want to tell you something, friends. It is really a path to anarchy. Put that down. From path out of the pandemic to path out of anarchy. Why do I say that? Because many are now seeing the double standards. And it is not the first. It is now being made more apparent by the pestilence 19 pandemic. Look at this, brothers and sisters. A path to anarchy. It says... Listen to this. It says, at the same time, what anarchy is seeking to sweep away all law. What we are told, my friends, what happened in France in the time of the revolution, there were double standards, and that led to anarchy in France. Let that sink in. And now we are told, friends, what happened. In the time of friends will happen in the last days. That's it, friends. So whose policies led to the double standards in friends? And that caused the French Revolution. We are told, my friends, the policy of Rome. That's it, friends. The policy of Rome. The policy of Rome led to double standards in France. I wonder who's behind the policies, the double standards here in America. I wonder who. You mean the papacy? All right, brothers and sisters, there it is. Again, the papacy, double standards in France, French Revolution. It's going to happen again. Look at this, friends. Let's have some details. What happened in France? It says, the courts of justice would always listen to a noble as against a peasant. Bribes were notoriously accepted by the judges. Check your phone. And the men who thus impoverished their fellow subjects were what, friends? Were themselves, were themselves exempt. Do you see it, my friends? What happened in France? Church leaders, the papal leaders, and the state leaders of France, who were allies of Popery, they were exempt from the draconian 
standards that were applied to the common people, they were exempt, brothers and sisters. If this is a nail in the coffin, type in the words, my friends, a nail in a sure place. Maybe you missed it, brothers and sisters. Again, the headline says what? Members of Congress exempt from Biden's inoculation mandate, but average Americans expected to comply. All right. And what happened in France? I tell you, not road, not a path out of the pandemic. It's a path to anarchy, brothers and sisters. There it is. Red word. And the men who were leading and impoverishing the nation, they themselves were exempt. That's it, friends. Blue words in the middle. They were entitled by law or custom to all the appointments of the state. That's it, friends. That's it. Last sentence. The court was given up to luxury and profligacy. There was little confidence existing between the people and the rulers. Brothers and sisters, we are nearing anarchy. And now watch. It says, there's one sure way to get around President Biden's inoculation mandate. What is it? Said the article. Be part of either. What two branches? Legislative and judicial branches of the federal government. That's the only way the secular minds are telling us. That's the only way we can get around the inoculation mandate. But for God's commandment keeping people, what is the sure way to evade this draconian mandate? I covered this this past Sabbath. Friends, here it is again. Ministry of Healing, page 183. Friends, please go back to this past Sabbath's message. September 11, 2021, I covered this. Pause the video. Read these statements. If you want the solution, it's right here on the screen. Please, friends, do not overlook this. How to assist the unemployed. How to assist the homeless? How can they be protected? How can they be preserved? Hmm? How? That's the question, brothers and sisters. Next quote. Please, my friends, read the statement. Country living. And I spoke about the five keys of survival in this time of draconian mandates. It's right there, brothers and sisters. Country living. Again, do you want to live as kings and queens? Brothers and sisters, there it is. To prepare your children, there it is. It's time to get ready, brothers and sisters. Please don't sleep on this. And now, I gave you the current events on both sides of the aisle. The church and the state. I gave you the practical work of preparation. The five keys of survival. My friends, conversion is one. Country living, the other. And there are three more in this past Sabbath's message. And now I come full circle. First, now we are seeing the double standards in the church. And the double standards... In the world. Do you remember Matthew 23? Were there double standards in the Jewish church at the first advent of Christ? Look at this scripture in light of what Mr. Ted Wilson and Mr. Gunundia have said and are doing. The Bible says in verse 1 through verse number 4 of Matthew 23. They say one thing, but they do the opposite. They say one thing, but do the opposite application. This is the mark of the beast. That's the beast at the same time. They do the opposite. Align themselves. Go in bed 
ecumenical alliance, brothers and sisters, with that same beast power. That's why Christ says that these are hypocrites. Woe unto you. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees. You are hypocrites. And your probation is about to close. We have come to the close of probation right now. As in the first advent, so in the second advent. I'll say one more thing. Could it be? After years of Elder Wilson evading, sidestepping, labeling the beast as the papacy of Revelation and the mark as Sunday worship by law. And now all of a sudden, he's now telling us what those two things are. Could it be it was done at the recent ASI meeting to silence the voice of protest? To say, look, we still believe. We still believe. Never mind what you see. We still believe the truth of prophecy. We still believe. Don't worry about what you see. To silence the voice of protest. I'm asking a question. Because they say one thing and do the opposite. But brothers and sisters... Let me tell you something. We should not rely on mere theory, but we need practical godliness. We need revival. We need reformation. And we're told in selected messages, book one, page 121 into 122, right there. Are we hoping to see the whole church revived? That time will never come. It will never come, brothers and sisters. And in that same book, volume one, book one, of selected messages, page 121 into page 122, it says, we have far more to fear from within than from without. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to continue this. On tomorrow by God's grace. And I'm going to try and uh, get on the program the individual from overseas that sent this current event. One thing is certain. While we watch the current events, let's make sure we individually have made our calling and are making our calling an election sure. Lest we fall in the same damnation of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25 through verse 27. And while we see the double standards also in the world, let's make sure we receive and apply the five keys of survival. By God's grace, we will resume. Father in heaven, we're thankful for this prophetic insights. We pray for the conversion of the church leaders of SDA, especially Wilson and Diop, before it is too late. And I pray for the compromisers who are around them. I pray for those who are afraid to protest because they want to protect their pockets, their pocketbooks, their bank accounts, their retirement checks, they want to protect and preserve the next invitation to come and speak at this church conference, this church meeting, this church summit. They are just like Judas, betraying Christ, the truth, his people, and the work, the mission for money, 30 pieces of silver. May we be found faithful. May we be found in Christ. Lord, dear God, I pray even now that you will provide for those who are struggling in this time of economic crisis, employment, the double standards, who are struggling emotionally, mentally, they're depressed, they're perplexed. We cling to your promises. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, my God shall supply 
all of your needs according to his riches in glory. And that our heavenly father, yes, he does have a thousand ways to provide for us of which we know nothing. And that those who accept this one principle of making the service of God supreme will find perplexities vanish and a plain path before their feet. Save us, dear God. We thank you for your peace. Thank you for the heavenly I salve, the signs in the church and in the world. Is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Maranatha, the protest continues. <laughs>